Sunday, 105 ESPN, ABC, the best game that ESPN's ever gotten for a playoff. The Texans are not involved. The Jags are not involved. Ravens and mm. Titans. This is playoff football. The trilogy. The trilogy. Somebody needs to study trilogies and let me know how they usually finish up. Um, because we've got – can you imagine if the Ravens lost three times to these guys in, in a calendar year pretty much? How fucking awkward that would be and how the narrative would just – man, uh, I actually have Baltimore favored by two points on the road. I'm getting good. Baltimore's actually favored by three and a half. Yeah, I, I like I like Baltimore. Um and that, that hurts for me because I love Tennessee, but I despise their defense right now. Despise. Yeah. I mean, just... It's it, not pretty. It's so bad, and it, it makes me wonder how they... Now, a lot of it was Baltimore was slumping earlier when they played this year, and they won 30-24, but how they held them to mm-hmm. that number. And in that game, they did the thing you don't want to do against Baltimore. They got down. Mm-hmm. Which also illustrated to me why Tennessee is the most interesting team in football because they'll go down two scores and they don't even have to break character. They just fucking give the ball to the big guy and they close the gap. Like, because mm-hmm. they, they average, you know, X amount of yards per pop and they'll be 140 yarder there. And they ended up winning on a 29 yarder, the walk off. Um, yeah. So the key when you look at these games to me is I mean, it's obviously Lamar who's playing really well right now and the group's playing well. Greg Roman, him, they figured some shit out. They had their rough spot. They look really good. The first time they lost 28 to 12 in the playoffs, um, Henry went for 195. Lamar was all over the field, 500 plus yards, but the turnovers, right? How do you, how do you ha- account for 500 yards of offense and score 12 points? Well, turnovers, you don't finish in the red zone. And what did they do the second time? One for four in the red zone when they played in this year. So, I think they're going to be better. I think Tennessee's defense has gotten worse. Uh, Yes, I'll be pulling for the Titans because I love the Titans, but I don't think they can get this thing done. It's going to be hard the way Baltimore's playing right now. Now, the one thing is, you were between a rock and a hard place if if you were Tennessee, uh, and maybe that's why this was kind of a look-ahead situation for them. You're looking at it and you're saying, oh, we can play Baltimore, who we've beaten twice, which isn't necessarily a good thing, Um, and a team that's really hot right now. Or we could play a team that blew us out and is even better than they were earlier this year when they boat races. So Tennessee, the way they're playing, golly, it's a tough spot for them. Okay. Um, I will say this. Every, I've heard plenty of people on social media, ta- seen plenty of people on social media, I've even heard it on TV today, talk about how I don't want to play the Baltimore Ravens right now. I think the Ravens are playing as well as possible. So I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I'm here now in the Baltimore area. I watch them every week. So I'm like, what have they done actually? Okay. What have they actually done in the last month or so? Okay. So beat, I want to beat bad teams. Horrific teams. Yeah. There's, there's the win against the Browns on Monday night. The week before that, they beat the Cowboys. Then the Browns win. The Jags they beat. The Giants they beat. And the Bengals they beat. Mm-hmm. So here's another thing for you. Whoever I pick in this game, just take the opposite team. There's no way I'm going to win betting this game. Uh, these two teams are my absolute nemesis. And no matter what I pick, the other's going to win. Yeah. You, you you mentioned it, but but you, this is where I have a problem because I overlook what teams are doing in the moment, and what I mean by that is I, when I look at this game, I'm like, there's Tennessee home dog. There's they if there's one thing they are not in this game, they're not afraid of Baltimore. No. They are not. It's not even close, but that that bravado, I feel like, is going to get in their way of their preparation because they feel like they've stoned Lamar before. And when you go back and watch last year's playoff game, it was a bunch of fourth downs that Baltimore went for and they didn't get. Right. And what did Tennessee do? They busted a long run and they hit a home run over the top. And that game was curtains early mm-hmm. because they knew they had the defensive personnel. Now they don't have the defensive personnel, but they do have the belief because they know they be in this team and they have one guy that that's not even mentioned for MVP in the league and he's doing more than anyone is at the uh at, at the position and that's and that's Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry 
a researcher just told me is he's cleared he's 400 yards ahead of dalvin cook for yards and that's another 500 to third place so he's basically 900 yards rushing i think right ahead of third place in the league mm-hmm. that's stupid i know i know that's- Oh, on, on a team that that's not boring or like traditionally like no that, and that that's the other thing Chris no one no one watches Tennessee nobody what because if you watch them you know Tannehill makes a lot more plays oh man and they, all all anyone look look at the last two drives yeah the, the throw to AJ and that's another guy AJ oh, Brown is, uh, AJ Brown is ridiculous when he got he got hurt early in the game today I was like oh fuck yeah. that's a big deal he he came back out there. They hit the bomb to him at the end of the game to avoid going to overtime. Because when you go to overtime, it's just like it's it's a great. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. I mean, Deshaun the way he's been so um, such a such a gutsy finish for them, and I'm so glad they won because what I would have hated to hear about was now I don't disagree with anything JJ Watt said, but I would have hated to hear it was the speech, and that's why. Because it just feeds people's fan fantasies even more of how, you know, in a fan's mind, everything's like Rudy or some dramatic football. Remember the Titans or listen, the Titans fucking lit them up offensively. No one thought Tennessee's defense was any good at this point in the season. So there's nothing I learned in, in this game today other than that Tennessee is just gutsy and they, they find interesting yeah. ways to win. They're- <laughs> You're gonna have to. Baltimore's gonna have to stab them a million times to kill them. Yep. Just and and, and I think they know that. I think they know that. But uh, this that's easily my most anticipated game of the weekend. That's I interesting. Wait. That's really interesting. Another thing you want to look at is Calais Campbell. May or may not get him back. The first time he played, Brandon Williams was out too. So I think it's I, to your point. It's if not one, it's one of the top two games of the weekend. It, it it's. I, all three AFC games are ahead of any NFC game for me when you look at the matchups and how I anticipate, anticipate them. One thing I will say about Baltimore, that they've done a really good job, and I haven't gone back and watched the tape, but they've done a really good job, again, after the passer in this game. Maybe it's just because they, they're playing teams that stink, but they've done a really good job of getting uh, pressures on, on an opposing quarterback. So that's something to definitely keep an eye on. You know what surprised uh, me? Their, their leader going into this week – in getting home in sacks was uh, Judon, who we both really like. He had six sacks, right? Uh, Ngakwe had three. Mm -hmm. And three hits. Calais Campbell's hits have been down. So it's funny. It's like we always talk about this. Wink creates a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, it's like they don't have anybody that's dominant. They brought these pieces in from different places that you're like, I really like this guy, I really like this guy. Calais, he's older, but I really like him. They just, they do things as a group. One other thing, I keep saying one other thing about this matchup, but I'm really into it. Late in that Tennessee game, Saffold left with ankle, didn't come back. I I didn't catch that. That's enormous. Huge, huge if they don't have him.